Right, it's a bit of a, an update on the project outside. So I've managed to find an afternoon to spend out on the patio project. Uh, as luck would have it, I think it's going to rain soon, but um, we'll see how much we get done. I thought I'd kind of give you a bit of an update on what the plan is. Some of you may have been watching the Sleeper um, series of videos. There's one more to come on that, which is how we finished them and the oil that we used on there. And actually I've still got to do another coat on there. We've been kind of looking at endless amounts of paving options, whether it's stone or uh, originally it was, we were just going to do a concrete slab because uh, we were getting another slab poured. Um, and then we looked at gravel and things like that. So we've come to the kind of decision that we may as well do it properly now um, rather than doing a short-term solution. So we're going to do it in natural stone, tighten with the house and have something there that will last um, for a few decades hopefully. Great, so it's raining now, uh, let's move into the garage. Right, so as I was saying we want to do it properly from the offset. Um, we were not going to do that kind of short-term solution of concrete, uh, pouring the concrete or doing gravel. We're going to get natural stone in there from uh, from day one. Did a couple of places like a garden centre and a couple of patio centres. That was quite helpful because there's just endless options really. Uh, slates and granites and limestones and sandstones, concrete. Uh, but that kind of helped us a little bit. We whittled it down and decided that we were going to go with a, a sandstone or a limestone to tie in with the house. And one of Joe's requests was it wasn't too rough underfoot like the concrete paths are now or like some of the kind of cheaper sandstone type uh, Indian sandstones you get where it's quite rough on top um, and there's kind of steps in the stone. So the first samples we got sent were uh, these ones here. So these were from Stone Market which seemed to be uh, really good quality stone and you know very ethically sourced stone and high quality. It's not like some of the stuff we had viewed, which tends to kind of split and um, where the kind of the layers of the sandstone are kind of coming apart. Got two lots of samples sent. Monday we had uh, the first set come, which is called Vintage Manor. It's their sort of worn, rustic sort of uh, stone, I'd say. Uh, so rather than having it kind of hewn or, or rough on top, it's been tumbled. Um, I think it's been tumbled anyway, that's how I imagined it, uh, which is just basically where loads of smaller stones have been tumbled against it and vibrated. And it's kind of given that look of an old flagstone that's been worn away over the decades, you know, in a pub or in a, an old property. And that comes in the big patio sized stones in kind of patio packs and, and lots of options. Uh, but going down the paths, we thought it'd be quite nice to do a cobble effect or sets which um, we're kind of, because it's quite a narrow path, it would mean that it's got a bit more interest to it. And this is exactly the same stone, uh, I believe. And again, nice and smooth on top. And that's, I think, one of the larger ones. It comes in three or four different sizes. And you lay them a bit like brickwork uh, to stagger the joins. So really like that. And I think that's going to be the best option for going down the path. Our reservation with this one is that the Vintage Manor, I think it was called. Yeah, Vintage Stone Manor. Had some pinks and blue sort of tones in there, which looked lovely, but against the house, just, I didn't feel like they were gonna match up and tie in quite as much, especially with all that oak and woodwork around. To give you an idea of the contrast, this is the sandstone, and it's just a little bit uh, too pinky. And if I was to wet this, uh, actually, let's do that. Okay, so if I wet this, you can see that there's quite a bit of contrast there. And while it's not the end of the world, I, I think it'd be more sympathetic to keep with the limestone. So I requested another sample, which was um, their limestone version, again in the same range. It's been tumbled and kind of worn again. So it's, it's slightly different. It's kind of got a slightly pitted type surface rather than that flat and smooth but this is really worn and it's, you know, I can imagine that on a summer's day feeling great uh, underfoot because it's going to be quite soft and it's still quite grippy for the winter. Our house is built from limestone as well, and was, although this is probably from a different continent. Um, it is a, quite a close match. Now, I'm hoping that it's going to tie in a bit more. It'll probably weather in a similar way. 
and actually this part of the wall is less uh, aged and less weathered than some of the more exposed sections. So if I wet this one, let's see, have a look at that. So I think the compromise is we're going to go with the limestone for the patio in the big slabs, in the big uh, paving stones. And then we're actually going to use the sandstone down the pathways. So they're not directly next to each other. And I think this is uh, a really nice finish. And although it might have some mottling of different colours with all the planting around it, I think that's going to be a nice option. So that's where we are. Today's job is going to be to pour the footings for the gazebo. Um, I've got to pour the five kind of bits of footing and I'm going to run some brickwork along the back of it. Try and get all that in place before this arrives.